The Human Chimpanzee Split The Miocene epoch announced its arrival with the crash of continents, thrusting the Alps and the Andes far into the sky. India was buckling the Asian plate, bulldozing the Himalayas high into the stratosphere. The Mediterranean Sea became a marshy plain, and the warm, wet forests of Africa were becoming windy savannas. It was a warm epoch, but there were extreme weather fluctuations. Mountain building and continental drift forced a change in the atmospheric circulation patterns, and the world began to cool and dry out. The climactic upheavals meant that animals and plants had to either adapt and diversify or die. The primates were no exception. So at the very start of the epoch, 23 million years ago, Proconsul climbed down from a tamarind tree and introduced itself. Proconsul was an ape, a tailless primate that probably ventured down to the ground often, but was more comfortable brachiating from branch to branch. Why this hominin is worth mentioning is because it's probably the common ancestor of gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans. The apes went their separate ways for reasons of survival. This is speciation. Animals and plants of all kinds find isolated niches and develop unique survival attributes for their particular environments. Before long, taxonomic family members evolve into a myriad of species. Locating the very species that Homo sapiens descended from, for example, would be impossible because no one will ever find the exact clan that our direct ancestor came from. Instead, sub-tribe and larger taxonomic groups can steer anthropologists in the right direction. Remember, it's the foundational developments in posture and teeth that separate the people from the non-people. Proconsul was the name of just one ape in the subfamily, some say tribe, known as the Dryopithecines. These closely related taxa migrated into Europe, India, and even China, as well as remaining in Africa. Each population group found an environmental niche and slowly developed into a distinct species. Almost all eventually became extinct. By good fortune, one type of Dryopithecine survived, the Protogorilla, and that's the species that commands our attention. It eventually evolved from a Dryopithecine into a modern gorilla. At some time that I've determined to be more than 13 million years ago, the proto-chimpanzee spun off the gorillas through a transitional species and eventually over time became a separate tribe. It's important to keep in mind that humans and the great apes share a direct lineage from proconsul, however circuitous. Eventually, humans and chimps split from a common ancestor. The question is, what was the first primate in the human-chimp split that would eventually become Homo sapiens? Anthropologists are debating this. Could it be the ape from genus Sahalanthropus, genus Aurorin, or genus Artipithecus? My thinking is that none of these apes were the first. The oldest of these fossils date back only seven million years, maybe eight. Many anthropologists now think that the human-chimp split might have been even 10 million years ago. My contention is that the split was 13 million years ago, and my nomination is Oreopithecus bomboli. Oreopithecus arrived on the scene about 13 million years ago. Its more popular name is Swamp Ape because it lived in the warm, swampy regions of central Italy. The date that I have assigned is controversial, and while many agree, there are many who think that Oreopithecus evolved more recently. However, the lignite beds in which these fossils were discovered are between 10 to 16 million years old. Radiometric dating established these bones at 13 million years old. A short explanation about how the dating of fossils is performed may be enlightening. When this swamp ape died, its body dropped to the ground. Every trace of the corpse would have vanished within a month unless something interfered with it and the carcass was preserved. In this actual example, something was a lava flow that encased the ape. Within the molten rock are many elements and minerals, two of which are potassium and argon. Argon is a gas that rarely interacts with other minerals and it's assumed that practically every molecule of argon escapes lava before it hardens, 
leaving only potassium in a newly formed rock. A variety of potassium, called an isotope of potassium, has a half-life of 1.3 billion years. This means that half the potassium in the lava will decay or convert into argon at the end of that time. When scientists tested the rocks in which our swamp ape was embedded, they calculated that only 1% of the potassium had decayed into argon, giving them a date of 13 million years ago. Many different radiometric tests are available. The disagreements over the actual time of origin of Oreopithecus stem from the contentious genetic clock tests performed by biologists. Biologists thought that they had discovered within all living organisms an evolutionary clock that ticks away with the precision of a Swiss watch. At regular intervals, supposedly, each species clock notches a mutation in its DNA. The mutation is a slight change in the nucleotide of the DNA. By measuring the number of mutations of each of the various species on Earth, biologists thought that they could determine the exact dates of the evolutionary beginnings of each taxonomic group through backwards extrapolation. So far, the results are disappointing. Mutation rates differ greatly among species, and the evolutionary variables are far from fully understood. Oreopithecus looked like a slightly undersized chimpanzee. It was suited for arboreal life, and when it roamed the ground, it was probably a knuckle walker, just like its great ape cousins. Yet there were differences between chimpanzees and the swamp ape, and those differences began in the oral cavity, the mouth. It was much too early in the evolution of hominid teeth to compare the molars and incisors of swamp ape to advanced human dentition, but still, the teeth of Oreopithecus were noticeably reduced in size compared to those of the chimpanzee. The long-threatening canines that are standard issue for the great apes were diminished and its simian tooth diastema disappeared. The swamp ape's pelvis was already shorter and wider than its great ape contemporaries, and fossils reveal that the iliac fossa and ischium were taking shape for a future of erect walking. Most striking of all was Swamp Ape's highly dexterous hands and wrists. The carpals, metacarpals, and the range of motion of the wrists were so close to human anatomy and physiology that it might have been possible for Swamp Ape to legibly write with a pen. Swamp Ape was not the only contender for the title of direct ancestor to all humans, and for a long while it seemed that Ramapithecus would grab the crown. However, the hands could not be ignored because, after all, tool making and tool manipulating are all about the hands. And after much ado, it seems that Oreopithecus was the first member of the subtribe Hominina. The other direct ancestors will eventually join this group. His proto chimpanzee cousin, whoever that was, was the first member of the subtribe Panina. In any case, Oreopithecus was the first non-simian hominid, and that was in the Cerevalian age of the Miocene epoch 13 million years ago. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.